I do need to warn you, like, this is a really big thing. If you're thinking of having kids in the future and steroids is something you thought of, this is, for some people, they will switch that off forever. So you may spend quite a while in this no man's land of, oh shit, my balls aren't working. I mean, it happens 100% of the time when you take steroids, that axis shuts off and then you hope that it comes back. This is the low test episode. I got my testosterone results back after two years of being on steroids and then coming off for five to six weeks, five or six weeks. Completely what I expected in terms of low testosterone, but it was very low. And I thought I would use this opportunity to talk to you about how it feels, what to expect, what happens when you come off steroids. So the main number we're talking about here is the 0.7 that you can see of uh, the 0.7 reading of testosterone. The, the bottom end of the range for someone natural, healthy, who's never taken steroids, general public, is eight, so I'm 0.7. The max, the max end of the range, that would be 29, so like the, that would be fantastic if you were natural, but you'd be pretty over the moon with that. So to be at 0.7, obviously well under that bottom end of the range. And how have I felt around that? I think mentally I felt on the whole not too bad. I don't think I'm the most self-aware of how I'm feeling in like a, over a time period until someone maybe points something out to me. But obviously I've been very aware that my testosterone was gonna be at zero. But I don't think I've had like a particular lack of drive or lack of motivation or struggle to get out of bed or struggle to go and exercise or anything like that. Now obviously there's a bit of a back to the fire going on at the moment, there's, there's a lot happening. I've kind of moved away from bodybuilding in my own training, started a new training uh, methodology or style, which is, you know, it's been exciting, it's been fun, it's been something I've looked forward to. So I've not had to sort of think, oh, I'm dragging myself into the gym to hold on to muscle or, or anything like that, or, or I have not, I have not needed to motivate myself to go because it's been fun and enjoyable. I've been part of classes where I've kind of booked on and had to turn up. I think another benefit of this new style of training has been that I've kind of reset everything completely. So I'm not going into the gym and feeling demotivated because I'm not hitting the numbers I was previously. I'm doing entirely new movements. So it's like a blank slate, you know, in, it, in its entirety. Um, and I didn't expect to be good at it. So starting something entirely new has meant that I've not needed to, to find that enjoyment from, from progressing at something I was previously good at. In terms of how I felt physically, I've definitely felt better physically than I do at the moment. Again, reference back to that, that baptism of fire where I'm doing a lot of new movements, I'm putting my body through a, a whole lot of stress and strain that it's probably not been under for, for many years, but I'm definitely feeling the, the impacts of that. I think I'm not feeling fresh in any way really um, in my body. I don't feel I'm recovering as, as well as I perhaps would have been if I'd stayed on anabolics or kept blasting or whatever. So there's definitely been a, a physical aspect to that. In terms of, again, have I lost strength? Probably, like if I went back into gym and do my old split now, would I be moving less weight? Almost certainly yes. But the beauty of moving away from that, that style of training is that I'm not too worried about that. And as I said in the previous video, which you can you can go and watch if, you, uh, if you're interested, is I'm not worried about losing muscle. It's something I actually kind of need and, and want to do to be any good at this new, uh, this new discipline. So something else that's gonna be worth talking about is that this is completely normal. This is a, blood, a set of blood results that I've expected entirely. When you take exogenous hormones, when you take steroids, when you take anything, and that, yes, even goes down to an anavar-only cycle, so don't think you can get away with it just with that, you are gonna shut down your HPTA, which is your hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis. That is the system in the body that produces testosterone naturally, keeps you going, keeps producing the sex hormones, or at least the sex hormones help to produce testosterone. When you take exogenous hormones, um, the body goes, oh, we're all good. We're getting it from somewhere else, so we don't need to do this anymore. So it, that, that system gets switched off. Now, I do need to warn you, like, this is a really big thing. If you're thinking of having kids in the future um, and steroids is something you thought of, this is, for some people, they will switch that off forever. It's not necessarily the majority of people, but for some, that is a risk. That is something you need to consider. It's obviously something I considered and it was something that I, well, at the time I, I deemed worth it. If, if my HPTA does not switch back on and I cannot have kids, I'll be very sad. It's something, it's something definitely to consider, but it is something that's, that's it, I mean, it happens 100% of the time. When you take steroids, that axis shuts off and then you hope that it comes back um, once you come off. That could take two, three, four, five, six months. So you may spend quite a while in this no man's land of, oh shit, my balls aren't working sort of thing. And that's the risk that I've taken. So coming off steroids and coming into this position of this like no man's land, whereby my testosterone is low, I'm gonna have to deal with these feelings of not recovering as well, potentially, you know, periods of, Kind of low mood that could happen some people have that libido uh, another thing to think about as well if you suffer from low, low libido already if you then dump your testosterone in the ground you may struggle with that um, i don't think i'll struggle with that to a point where it's bothered my 
like it's not impacting my life. But definitely the performance and the the uh, the recovery aspects of having been on steroids, I've definitely felt. What I'm doing going forwards, so what you can see from these buds as well is actually the FSH, so follicle stimulating hormone, is actually not or no longer in that not less than 0.3 range, so it's not at zero. What we typically see there are the two hormones that get shut off, so FSH and LH follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, they get shut off and therefore no testosterone is produced. The fact that I've already seen FSH slightly above zero says to me that potentially we're starting to see that recovery of the HPTA. What I'm gonna do is give it another four to six weeks and then test again um, and see where those markers are at. If in that next test, it all comes back flat zero, then I might have to start thinking about PCT, which is post-cycle therapy. Typically, some a protocol that you'll follow or many bodybuilders will follow to get that HPTA back working again. It would be fantastic if I don't have to do that because it'll be some money and some drugs that I have to spend to do it and some more time. So we'll see and I'll keep you updated on that on that, on that that process. But yeah, it's uh, if this is something you're worried about, then once again, as I've said many times, don't take steroids. Hopefully that gives you a bit of an insight into how it feels to be in extremely low regions of testosterone. I'll keep you updated with how I'm feeling, how we, how I move through the training, how my body copes, if I pick up any injuries, which may well happen. Uh, but if you wanna, you wanna keep, keep in touch with, with how we're doing, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.